Welcome to BioPractice webinar on how FDA trains its inspectors to review CAPA and what you should do to prepare. The presenter for today's webinar is Jeff Kassoff, RSC CQM, Director of Quality Mediators. And now I would like to hand over to speaker Jeff Kassoff. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much for your introduction. Let me welcome everybody to this webinar. For those of you who haven't attended that many webinars, really the only detriment, the only downside is that we can't see each other. And the way I like to address that is at the end we'll have a Q&A session. And if you want to have the Q&A session be more of a discussion, I'm open to that too. I just want to meet your needs as, as my customer. When, when you deal with CAPA, a lot of us have different varying, cap, varying CAPA systems at our facilities. And it's difficult to anticipate what the FDA inspector is going to look for, whether they'll think your system meets the needs of, of the requirements, uh, the regulatory requirements. However, what you'll see in this webinar is the, que the f areas that the inspector will look at, the questions they'll ask, what samples they'll take, and some, along with that, some recommendations that based on my years of experience at several different facilities during a couple of dozen uh, FDA inspections that the inspectors have, have appreciated, have liked. It's very rare, quite honestly, if ever, that you'll receive a positive um, feedback, re receive some positive feedback from the FDA inspector. If they don't write you up for something, that's good. Negative reinforcement, I guess, as opposed to positive reinforcement. Really three documents that are used by the FDA inspectors. The first one is the Investigation and Operations Manual. We'll talk about these in a little detail. Here's the uh, web address for that. Then we'll talk about the CPG, the Compliance, the compliance excuse me, Program Guidance Manual for the inspection. And we'll, I'll really admittedly, cursorily, very briefly touch on the first two because it's the third one, in my opinion, why you're here. The reason you attended this webinar is because you want to see what happens during the inspection. And the QCIP manual is helpful in that area. It's 108 pages, and it is not easy reading. But if you or someone who works for or with you takes the time to read it, it really helps you see into the inspector's mind. It helps you anticipate the questions that they're going to ask. Starting with the IOM, <clears throat> the, with regard to 5622 specifically quality audit. What I've done from each of these documents is that I've gleaned, I've taken the CAPA related sections from each of them and pulled them out and included them in this presentation. So the entire rest of the IOM, the manual, won't be here except for the specific sections that <clears throat> deal with, as you can see here in the second bullet point, corrective and preventive actions. So a <clears throat> little dichotomy here between the first sentence, which says internal audit reports are exempt from FDA purview, and the requirement that any corrective and preventive actions are not covered under this exemption. So they won't ask you to see, well, they might ask you, but you don't have to sh show them your internal audit reports, but you do have to show them proof that you implement CAPAs, let's call them, corrective and preventive actions, in response to adverse findings during their internal audits. So the question is, how do you not show them your audit reports, but do show them evidence that you implement CAPAs from those? And how to comply, you'll see, what you'll see during this entire presentation is a content or a requirement of a particular sec section and the following slide, which is, a, which is a method of compliance. Something to remember here is I'm not dictating that you do that. This is, from my experience, a method of compliance that has withstood scrutiny during FDA inspections and reviews. So what you want to do here is you want to separate the audit reports, the findings themselves, from the corrective actions. A couple of ways of doing this is that some, some of us have audit committee meetings, internal audit committee meetings. Um, and what we do is we go through each of the subsystems that's going to be or has been audited during that year, and we discuss how many findings there are and what their corrective, what their closure status is. This, such a document may not need to have a list of the specific findings, but merely finding numbers. You might have under the internal audit for 